Empire. Hello and welcome to my podcast. Today, I talk to Washington running back Jarrett Patterson, who will be a fun player to watch this summer. Don't know if he's going to make the 53-man roster or not, but he will have a chance during the preseason to strike his ace, and I think you'll enjoy watching him as he goes about his business. And he's a good story, an undersized local player who also is good friends with Chase Young. We talk about how Patterson's size has helped him, how his parents helped shape his mindset, and why he thinks Young is goofy. As always, you can read my work on ESPN.com. I'll have a story up next week on tight end Samus Reyes and his journey from Chile to the doorstep of an NFL roster. And that will be played as a podcast too, a longer podcast, in the in whether next week or the week after. And you can follow me on Instagram at John Kime ESPN. Interview with Patterson was taped during minicamp, as you'll probably be able to tell by the first couple of questions. I did like how Patterson caught the ball, and that's something we discussed early on. It was not a role he filled in college at Buffalo for good reason. He was the primary ball carrier, and they didn't want to wear him out. But that's the role he'll have to fill in the NFL. I like getting him in here now because even if he's just on the practice squad or a fourth running back, Washington could have a need for a third down back next season. With J.D. McKissick's contract up after this season, It's a good example of how you can plan a year out with a possible replacement. If Patterson develops, great. If not, then they can either re-sign McKissick or find somebody else. Patterson will have to show that he can not only catch, but more importantly, help in pass protection and run routes the proper way from multiple spots. As we discuss, a good third down back must do all those things well. Clinton Portis was a tremendous pass protector, and that's why he obviously wasn't just a third down back but it's why he was able to stay on the field for more than just the regular rundowns. And Chris Thompson improved as a third down back as he improved in pass protection. They're not always going to go out for passes. You have to trust them to pick up blitzes and help in protection. Alex Smith's sack on the play in which he was hurt was caused by a blown protection by the third down back. But Patterson did look good catching the ball this spring. We'll see how the other areas progress in camp and in the preseason games. That said, let's get to my conversation with Jarrett Patterson, how his size helps him, and who are some other smaller running backs he tries to mimic, plus a memory from a championship game long ago that continues to shape his mindset. This episode is brought to you by HP Instant Ink. No one is reading your mind, but HP Instant Ink knows when your printer is running low and sends you new cartridges, so you never have to think about ink. Save up to 50%. You'll pay less than $5 a month for ink and never run out again. Find out if your printer is eligible and enroll today at hpinstantink.com. Conditions apply. For details, visit hp.com slash instantinkspotify. Let's talk about Underdog Fantasy. Underdog Fantasy is the best and easiest place to play fantasy football for big cash prizes. On Underdog Fantasy, you just draft. No need to worry about waivers, lineups, or injuries. Underdog handles it all for you. Go to underdogfantasy.com or download the app, draft a season-long best ball team, and that's it. No in-season management. They're going to give you $25 when you sign up so you can take a free shot at a $1 million grand prize in their fantasy football tournament. That's right. You can get a free $25 in bonus cash on Underdog Fantasy if you use the code KIME, K-E-I-M, when you make your first deposit. I love Underdog because it's just so easy to use. The mobile app is slick. The website is user-friendly. So do what I've been doing. Go to underdogfantasy.com, join a league, draft a team, and that's it. You're good for the season. Remember, go to underdogfantasy.com, the App Store, or the Google Play Store, sign up with the code KIME, K-E-I-M, and get a free $25 in bonus cash. Hey, Garrett, how are you? How's it going? I'm doing all right. How are you? I'm doing well. Good. Well, let's just, let's just start and... How how are things been going for you so far? How do you feel out there? 
Yeah, everything's been going good. You know, I feel like I'm adjusting real well to the next level. And, you know, I feel like uh, everything is going well for the most part. You know, uh, started with, you know, rookie mini camp, going to OTAs, and now with the, uh, you know, mini camp right now with the vets. I think everything's going well. You know, being a sponge, you know, learning from the vets and just picking up the playbook real well. So I'm happy with everything. One of the things that Ron Rivera talked about was your ability to catch passes. Now, I'm assuming at Buffalo, you weren't used in that role. There was no need for you in that role. So are you surprised at what you've been able to show, even in just even if it's just in the spring practice, are you surprised at all what you've been able to show there? No, nah, not at all. You know, I always could do those things. Uh, it, Buffalo is more of the system. You know, uh, they wanted me to be the bell cow. Right. And, you know, I, that, you know and, and, and there was countless times where I went to the, you know, uh, the offensive coordinator at Buffalo that saying uh, and said I wanted to be part of the you know passing game because I could do those things you know ever since high school I was an athlete I did I did it all and so I'm, I'm not really surprised this is nothing new to me I can kind of you know run run in between the tackles and, and you know be uh, versatile in the passing game so and with the passing game their protection is a big part and then um, you know obviously you have good hands but what are some of the other keys that they've told you to being a good player in that role in the NFL. Yeah, uh, really, uh, you know, I, I got, they know, they knew, you know, Coach Jordan, he knew I can run the ball. You know, they all kind of knew that. You, you can see that on tape, you know, but like, they were very surprised, you know, uh, that I can catch the ball like that. So I think the third thing, the third step is right now is showing them, you know, when uh, when training camp comes around that I'm a willing blocker, you know, I'm an all around right. You know, I'm not just a, a, a two, two, two step. You know, I, I can do all three. I'm all around back and I, I can really do it all. So just showing that when, you know, when training camp comes around. And I think that that would be good to show, you know, when training camp comes. Everybody always talks, they, everybody always focuses on your size. And so, and I, you know, I'm going to ask you about that because it's part of your story and it's why you're where you're at because you play a certain way. Probably because that, how much has that helped you get to where you are now? Yeah, everyone talks about it as a negative, but it seems like it's been a positive for you in terms of what it, how it fuels you. Yeah, no, nah, definitely. You know, that gives me that chip, you know, uh, just just that when people talk about my size, like I said, it gives me that chip on my shoulder. And, you know, and it is and it's crazy that people, you know, still talk about, you know, the size thing when there's guys that came before me and, and have done it. You know, uh, a good a good mentor I have, you know, in my corner right now, Maurice Jones, Drew. You know, uh, I talked to him very, very well, and he he wasn't that big, you know. And I feel like it's I, it's kind of advantage. It's kind of, it's hard for you know defenders to tackle me because I have that you know low center of gravity. So I use it as an advantage more than anything. And I was going to ask you that. And I'm only listen. I'm only five nine and a half, and I always say a half because I'm proud of that half, right? So and I have sons. I would always tell them use your size, even if you're shorter, to your advantage. So what other ways do you use it to your advantage? Yeah, uh, like I just said, uh, low center of gravity, you know, hiding behind that, behind, you know, those, those big offensive linemen and, and things like that. And you know, I feel like defenders really that don't know, you know, how to tackle me because, you know, uh, I'm so compact and, you know, so, so low to the ground, it makes it very difficult. So I think, like I said, that's advantage and, and positive in, in my favor. What else has Maurice Jones drew? What has he worked with you or talked to you about that, that has really helped? Yeah, just really, you know, when I was down there, you know, training at uh, Pete Marino, he was he was down there. He was saying, just giving me, you know, advice, you know, just telling me, you know, uh, it's really about your routine. You know, once you figure out your routine, you just keep master it, you know, each and every every uh, every year, you know, and really take care of your body because the best ability, the best ability is availability. And he, he was just giving me these things like that. He's like, once you get your opportunity, you know, never look back and, you know, always, you know, be willing to play special teams and, and just be a football player. And, you know, and I feel like I have done that. You know, I'm willing to do that. I'm willing to play special teams. I'm, doing, I'm, I'm willing to do whatever, you know, to show the coaches why I belong here, you know, in Washington. And it's funny because your special team stuff, I remember reading a story about after one of your big games at Buffalo, that the next practice you're out there on kick coverage. Why and I know you probably know what I'm talking about, but why why did you want to do that? Even at that point, did you know that this is something I'm going to have to show, or what what was the thinking behind that? Yeah, uh, I, I guess you can say that, you know. Uh, but I, I just mean just me being a football player. You know, I, I don't look at myself, you know, as just a running back. You know, I'm a football player. I, I I'll do whatever it takes to help the team win. You know, if it's running down kickoffs, or you know, on punt, or on you know, in the block on punt return, whatever you know, whatever it takes. And that's just my mindset I have, and I feel like. You know, that what separates me from a lot of guys is my mindset. So that, that's just I was just the reason for that. I'm just a football player ready to, you know, work. Do you ever feel like you've been able to 
not have to prove. I mean, everybody's got to prove himself at some point, but your Chase Young is your best friend. I mean, like he's in a different category than most people are. Have you ever felt like you didn't have to show or prove what you could do or have to earn it? Yeah, uh, I feel like I've been doing this all my life. That's why it's kind of just like deja vu to me. It's, it's not been me. I, I've been here before, you know, it's, and it's more not even proving uh, others, you know, wrong. It's just proving myself right at the end of the day. But like I said, I feel like uh, I've been here. I feel, it just feels right to me because I've been here before, if that makes sense. But yeah. it feels right, you know, and, and I love every day I go, you know, I want to get 1% better each and every day. And I just love, you know, showing up to facilities and, you know, I'm grateful for the opportunity. And then Ron Rivera mentioned Darren Sproles is another one. Is that a, have you studied guys like him? Have you watched film of guys like that just to see what they did? Yeah, absolutely. You know, Darren Sproles is another guy, you know, one of my all time favorite, you know, running backs, you know, and and definitely, you know, a guy like that, you know, uh, shows that, you know, size, the size doesn't matter. You know, if you're a mismatch, you know, for the defense, you know, you can be used. And, you know, he went on to play 14 years. You know, and, and that just shows that, you know, you, you can play, you know, uh, it doesn't matter about size. If you can play, you know, you can play. You go, for, you had two games, you rushed for 409 yards. And I think, what was the other one? 301? You have eight yeah. touchdowns in one game for another. What's that feel like when you're in a game having those kind of games? I mean, those are, those are two games where most people have that for their career or for a season. What was that like? Yeah, man, it was unbelievable. You know, unbelievable day. You know, especially the uh, eight touchdown one. That I feel like that was very uh, uh, historic. You know, not just how it happened. But, you know, uh, I, uh, I was wearing number forty one. I usually wear twenty six, so I had to wear forty one because uh, there's a great a great tran- transition at Buffalo. You know, one of our, one of our passing teammates, Solomon Jackson. You know, the coaches picked someone to wear that number, and I was wearing that number. And that night, I just wanted to uh, you know represent his number. That's all I was thinking about, and, and I can say I made him. And his family proud. So, yeah, I would I would think so. Does it does it feel surreal when you're having a game like that? Because, again, 400 yards and eight touchdowns. That's a few. You know, that's even for great running backs like in college. That's a couple of good games, not one. Yeah, no, nah, it's definitely it's definitely uh definitely unreal. You know, and not even even in, in, you know just transition to the next level. You know, here you know I, in college. You know, I was the bell cow. I got 30, you know, 20, you know, sometimes 38. I don't even need all that. You know, uh, <laughs> I don't need 30 carries. You know, I, I can, you know, be good with, you know, five, 10, you know, things like that. So it's just, uh, it's just, you know, I can do whatever the team needs me to do. What, how would you describe yourself as a runner and what makes you a good runner? I feel like, uh, you know, the biggest thing I make people miss, you know, it's very, it's very uh, rarely the first defender, you know, brings me down. You know, I can, you know, I can get the tough yardage, you know, even despite being the size, you know, I can, you know, like I said, I can be the hard runner, you know, I can make you miss, you know, I can run past you. And I feel like that, that was just, that just makes me, you know, dangerous. And I, and I, I'm, I'm an asset in the passing game, when, you know, cause I showed it, you know, and I just feel like I'm just a, a all around playmaker. I'm not just a running back, but I'm just an all around playmaker. And, you know, and I get, I, I hate to harp on the size, but it is, cause again, part of you, but like at, at your size, not a lot of guys and, I'm sure there's a pride thing when you say, hey, I'm doing something not very many people can do, especially at my size. Why do you love football so much that you wanted to keep pushing and, and to show everybody what you could do? What uh, is just, it that you like so much? Yeah, I just I feel like just uh, the competitive edge, the competitive atmosphere, you know, and just, you know, that that hard work and determination, you know, having passion. And like you said, just just proving myself right, you know, to to, right. the, to the critics and and, and that's really that's really you know why I, re, I, I I love playing football because you know I've been an underdog all my life and it's and it's never new to me. What did you learn from your parents? Because your dad was a big time running back, linebacker. Your mom was, I think, what is a state tra- uh, track champion. It was that that's some pretty good genes there. What and and I know your mom worked you hard. So what did you <laughs> learn from? What did you and we'll get to that in a minute. But what did you learn from them? Yeah, you know, uh, my dad, he he was, you know, he was kind of laid back one. You know, he didn't really, uh, you know, push me or, you know what I'm saying? He was just the really, uh, he was just the one to use just for encouragement. You, you, everything's going to be okay. But my mom, on the other hand, was kind of the, you know, the one that kind of lit fires in us and kind of pushed us. And, you know, and I just never forget, you know, I tell people all the time, you know, uh, never forget playing my first uh, youth ball, you know, organized sports, Boys and Girls Club, me and my twin brother, James, um, and he and, and we were we're uh, in the championship, and you know James is playing. I really didn't, you know, I didn't play at all. You know, my my first year of playing football, organized football, and you know everybody's cheering, and I'm over there, you know, in the corner, you know, feeling sorry for myself, crying, and you know my mom kind of, you know, 
kind of yanks me up and tell her, tells me stop feeling sorry for yourself. You're not good yet. You have to get better. And I, just, I would never forget that, you know, and that always something that's always stuck with me to this day. I mean, that's, and that's like, not every parent does that either. And so that, but you, you can tell when somebody knows what buttons they have to push, what were her workouts like for you guys? What did she have you guys? Cause you, didn't she like take you guys out to the park and do things like that? What'd she do? Yeah, well, she'll have us on, on the track, you know, on running, you know, doing track workouts, you know, r- running through trails, you know, you know, and I, and I, and I was really, you know, uh, at a young age, <laughs> you know, getting up with my sisters play, you know, AAU should take them to the court and, you know, should take me and James to either the track or, or run around the trails. So. And what, what, how much, I mean, would you guys do those all the time? I mean, how often would you do those? Oh yeah, we would do those all the time, you know, you know, all the time, probably, you know, every weekend, you know, we'd go out there and, and, and it should, should have us do a running workout and, and things like that. So. And how much do you look back? Do you guys look back on those and laugh now? What do you think? Oh, no, we definitely, you know, look back, you know, when everybody's around and definitely look back on those and just laugh. And but all at the same time, you're just appreciative and just thankful, you know, because uh, I wouldn't be, you know, who I am without, you know, her or my dad. Absolutely. And, you know, the other thing, too, is your your twin is still in college, correct? Yeah, correct. What's that like? Is this this will be like the first time you guys are. Is this the first time you're separated, really? Yeah, really. Yeah, definitely. I mean, going going into a decision, you know, he was the first one to tell me you need to leave, you know, uh, just because, you know, how, how everything was. He, he felt like Buffalo, you know, was running me to the ground. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I just, you know, I felt like it was right, too, because I feel like, you know, uh, if they wasn't going to use me in the passing game, I, you know, I wanted to show that, you know, that I can do those things. It's just, you know, the coaches didn't didn't, you know, didn't need me for that. And I also thought, you know, I could open doors for him, you know, at the next level. So that's the whole process thought and going to that. And you feel like you can do that for him? Yeah, for sure. I, mean, I feel like I can definitely open open some doors for my brother, you know, so he can uh, achieve his dreams as well. And then I think your coach at Buffalo called you the best practice player he's ever coached. When you look back on it, what things would you do in practice that maybe others weren't doing? Yeah, just, you know, just just uh, finishing. You know, I finish everything. You know, uh, I finish everything, that, and I give every – Everything go 100 percent. You know, it doesn't matter, you know, if if I had a bad game or a good game, you know, I'm going to practice hard because if you practice hard, the game makes the games easier. And that's what I always thought. And, you know, just being at Buffalo just really helped me become a pro at practice, you know, just really, you know, attention to details, you know, finishing every drill, you know, going harder every drill and, and, and things like that. So when what point last year, because a lot of times there's a game where you have where you just say, like, this is just different. I feel different when you maybe feel like I'm ready for that next level, was there a game? I know with the big numbers and all that, but was there a game? Was there a play? Was there anything that kind of stuck out, stood out in your mind that said, I'm ready for the next level? Uh, I mean, it was probably just that whole season, you know, and then, you know, that, you know, chase, you know, he was like, man, you, you can definitely just hearing him telling me, man, you, you, you can definitely play on Sundays, you know? And I was like, man, I know I can, <laughs> I just need an opportunity. You know, I never was a guy that, you know, uh, uh, oh, I feel sorry for myself because I, you know, I went undrafted. I'm a guy that just needs an opportunity and I'm make the best of everything I get. So, and then with Chase, what was it like playing with him? I mean, first of all, how long have you known him? Yeah, we've been knowing each other since middle school, you know, uh, so a very long time. You know, when, when we uh first both attended, you know, St. Vincent Plotty, you know, uh, their little summer workouts. Yeah, I uh, heard about like, those. Yeah, so those, those are kind of intense, you know. Uh, and we kind of bonded, you know, over over since then. And you know, I've been knowing him for some years now. So, what was what was he like back then, just as a player? And you know, I mean, obviously we know him as a, in a, the way we do now. But what was it like back then? Yeah, uh, you know, I feel like he's he's the same to me. Like, and it's crazy. Like, he's just he's just the same, you know, uh, goofy person. You know, the, back in eighth grade, you know, very very has a great personality. You know, works hard, very very determined. You know, and and I, I feel like. Uh, you know, he, he's the same person since we were, you know, back in eighth grade. How was he goofy? Yeah, just, you know, always cracking jokes, you know, thinking he can dance and, and sing <laughs> and just things like that, you know. So I've heard a lot about his singing and he's actually pretty proud of it, too. <laughs> yeah, he'll, he'll stand behind it. He thinks he can really sing, but he, he really can't. <laughs> As a player, what do you remember about him back then? Could you what did you see in him back then? Even I think it was two years you guys played a plotty. What did you see in him as a player at that time? Yeah, uh, I mean, we had a coach, you know, Justin Winters. And he kind of, like, he told us, he was like, yeah, like, Chase, he's going to bring all the colleges 
mm. to St. Louis and be like, which we already knew just because I knew I, we knew we seen his dad, his mom, and I'm like, yeah, this kid is gonna be tall. And it was just a game. I think it was Tim Gray. Uh, we was playing against ASCS, and I think he had like four sacks. He had like a pick, pick six, and then I was like, yeah, he gonna be something special, you know. And and then you know I, everything worked out for the best. So, so you were you're not surprised to see what happens yeah, in the Woodrow High State. Not, 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 not surprised at all. Not surprised at all. And you know, was was you know, was he? I, he always seems like kind of a humble guy about things too. Was it the same way back then? Yeah, same, 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 same back then. You know, very humble. You know, that, that doesn't you know uh, that doesn't come off cocky. He's confident more than more than anything, and that's I feel like that's what you need. You know, to have confidence to uh, to play in this league. So. And how how did he help you? And maybe how did you? Did, were there some things that you helped him with, just over yeah. the years? Yeah, I just uh, he just helped me. You know, just telling me what you what, you know what to expect. You know, adjusting and just him. You know, having my back. You know, him vouching for me. That just gives me the ultimate confidence. Why why I belong? And you know, and me just helping him. Just you know, like just keep going. You know, never get uh, you know satisfied. Which I know he won't. But sometimes you know, I just got to remind him. You know, right. just remember what you're trying to achieve at the end of the day. Yeah, it's got to be cool for you guys, whatever happens this year, to be on the same field right now together. No, that's definitely cool because it, it feels like home, you know, just, just having, a, you know, one of my one of my closest friends, one of my friends call, call a brother, you know, it, it, feel, it feels like home. Do you have a favorite Chase Young story from back in the day? Maybe something that was, you'd rag on him for or anything or? Uh, I mean, it was, it was, it, we had like a little, uh, we had a team, like a team meeting back in high school. And I think we had like a uh, like a freshman talent show, <laughs> and it, and, it was, and, it, and he was like imitating the coach or something like that. And it was the funniest thing uh, he did. It was kind of it was kind of hilarious. I wish we still had the video. I think we actually might have that video, but it was kind of funny though. He's got a good sense of humor, it seems. Yeah, no, nah, he definitely does. You know, it always lasts when we're around each other. You know, off the field and you know, hanging out and stuff like that. Last thing. So, what are you looking forward to most about training camp? Because you know, that's the next big step. Uh, honestly, man, just put on the pads, you know, again, you know, I'm just ready to, uh, that's it. <laughs> just really putting on the pads again and, and, you know, and really getting to it, you know, getting to work, you know, start, you know, getting, look, you know, start, you know, getting right for preseason and, and, and things like that. that. That's the most, you know, biggest thing. And I apologize. You were a communication major in college. What did you, what do you want to do with that? And um, is there anything that you had in mind with that? Yeah, uh, so I uh, was a communications major, and I was a health and human service major okay. with a, with a minor in, in youth counseling. But at the end, after you know my playing days, I want to uh, become a counselor. You know, whatever part you know, probably in uh in in, in the school because I, I just love you know helping people out and you know just helping people through their problems. And I feel like I just get that from my mom. She was a educator, and mm. you know she was a principal, right? Yeah, you know, and even even I, I always told my mom I want to you know open up schools you know, uh, in Maryland and in Buffalo where I played at eventually. So good for you, man. That's listen, you can serve as a, if you, you can hit this here, there have been a lot of people looking up to you and that, that helps what you want to do even more. So good yeah, luck definitely. with all that, man. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. All right. Thanks, Jerry. I appreciate it, man. All right. Thanks for having me. What's up. It's Mike Jones from the football Jones podcast. I know you're enjoying your time with the John Kime report. But once you're done, I want to invite you to come over and check out my podcast. Each week, we take a deep dive into some of the most pressing topics around the NFL. High-profile guests from the coach, player, and front office ranks, as well as the top league insiders. Check out the Football Jones Podcast, another fine product brought to you by Empire Media. That's it for this episode. Thanks to Jarrett for joining me, and thank you, as always, for listening. I'll be back with another podcast on Tuesday. Have a happy 4th of July. Talk to you next time.